One little act of kindness can go a long, long way. Two little acts of kindness can brighten anyone's day. Three little acts of kindness can make a beautiful sound. Many acts of kindness help the world go round. Hi, and welcome back to Tell Me What Happened, the podcast that features folks from all walks of life talking about their childhood experiences and how those experiences have impacted who they are today. I'm your host, Jay Rehack, and like you, I've had my share of childhood experiences, some of them painful, some of them quite beautiful. But I like to think that whatever's happened to me in my childhood has made me who I am today. Tell Me What Happened is sponsored by Sideline Inc. Publishing, publishers of quality books, including Susan Salador's classic, I've Got Peace in My Fingers, the perfect gift for the holidays. Tell Me What Happened is also sponsored by LaughSaver.com. Download the app, LaughSaver.com, and record your laughter. We'll keep it for you now and forever. It's free, and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren will appreciate it. That's LaughSaver.com. All right. Today I have as my guest a friend of mine, a former student, a great guy, Keontae H., Keontae is co-founder and president of Sunbend Solar. He is motivated by his passion for environmental stewardship and is effortful in providing education on sustainable living practices in urban areas. Keontae has a background as a certified solar installation technician and has pioneered solar power stations in urban agricultural landscapes. Welcome to Tell Me What Happened, Keontae. Thank you, Mr. Rehack. Appreciate the introduction. All right. Hey, by the way, what year did you graduate, Keontae? 2015. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, whoa. I had no idea. I would have said three years ago. All right. Well, that's <laughs> not the story. That's not why we're here. So I'm going to ask you, Keontae, are you ready to tell your story? Absolutely, Mr. Rehack. I'm ready to tell my story. All right. I'm going to get out of the way, Keontae. And at the end, I'm going to ask you just one question. And that question is, how do you think whatever t- you tell me has impacted who you are? But take it away, Keontae. Sure thing. Thanks again for the introduction. I appreciate you. My story are three small increments that in totality are very impactful towards my current life. It's a tale of how superheroism has ingrained itself into my life at a young age. And it starts with, I'll take you to... The age is a bit blurry as far as what age I am, but definitely before high school, for sure, before middle school even. I'll take you to the basement in my family home, jumping on my grandpa's bed, very short, so I could still jump up and down without hitting the ceiling, practicing all of the high kick flip karate moves and action punches. Saturday morning, and one of the greatest acts of superhero television comes on. It is an episode of the Power Rangers, but not just any normal episode. This episode is where the Red Rangers, who are typically in the Power Rangers cartoon front-up series, are the leaders. And there are several different Power Rangers. The Red Rangers are always the leaders, correct? And so on this one particular episode, this amazing hour-long special, as opposed to 30 minutes, all of the Red Rangers from all of the various series come together to fight the great evil from space. And this was a very big event on TV because for one, it was a crossover event. Usually when you see characters on their respective shows, they don't just pop in and out. So this is a crossover event. And once again, the Red Rangers are the leaders and the icons, the the, the top costume sellers during Halloween even. And so to see this phenomenon of all the leaders, all the best guys coming together to fight this evil tyranny from space, I'm watching it in the basement, on the basement TV, jumping in my grandpa's bed up and down, all the booms, all the bams, all the chas, going crazy, having a good time, just reenacting everything right in front of me there. So that, that was like a big, I even, I'm 25 right now. Like I said, this was happening before middle school. So I've recently, within the last two years, have just decided, I just decided I wanted to watch that episode again, just because of how much nostalgia it brings me and how 
how good it just feels to watch things that I grew up on. So that's part one, legendary Power Ranger episode on TV, all the Red Rangers coming together. Part two of this starts with my friends. This was in this was in third grade. Yeah, this is in third grade. My friends were hardcore Saturday morning cartoon action watchers. So hardcore to the fact that we would watch what was going on and then we would create quizzes for each other <laughs> to say what character does XYZ. Which which power does X Y Z character have? This is third grade. We're hardcore. We would we would literally write these questions for each other after school, bring them to each other during school to take. And this got us in trouble one time. We actually like the teacher thought we were passing notes back and forth and confiscating. Was just like, oh, what's this? We were like, oh, <laughs> we actually quiz each other on the shows, the the action cartoons that we watch. So funny. We didn't get in trouble that or anything but it was very funny because i imagine that most teachers when they catch students passing pieces of paper their notes about gossip but no we were quizzing each other <laughs> and then like grading each other you, you we pass it for your answer and then we pass it back and then graded it to see like how well you did so that was a very big part of, of of childhood like we really enjoyed watching cartoons especially the ones with superheroes and action and the kung fu and whatnot part three of this story begins a little bit closer to middle school, sixth or seventh grade. One of uh, my dear friends who's passed away since then, his name is Corvus Humphreys. He drew comic books, took computer paper, folded the papers in half and stapled the ends and hand drew comic book characters, all inspired by Power Rangers, Dragon Ball Z, all of it, you name it. And I was so, I was blown away at that time. <laughs> like we're at this phase, right? We go from part one of my story is being exposed to, you know, cartoons and, and, and superheroes of this world. Part two is we're analyzing, we're studying. Part three is creating our own narratives and creating our own worlds. And at that time, I was, I was like, wow, this is, we can do this, huh? Like we can just take computer paper and we can draw our own stories and we can create our own universes and our own worlds of fictional characters and, and, and superpowers and all those great things. And we eventually got into that more so, or I got into that more so drawing cartoon characters, drawing my own, literally on a sheet of paper, creating the little panels step by step. First they jump, then they run, then they blast. So it was a very incremental part of my growing up. Like, so there isn't necessarily one specific moment, but just these different parts of my childhood that involved really consuming and enjoying superheroes, the action, the Saturday morning cartoons and creating our own stories that just really fulfilled us, really brought, I'll say for myself at least, really brought a sense of joy and excitement into into my life at that time. I don't necessarily participate as heavy anymore these days, but like I mentioned all every now and then, think to myself, man, like I remember that one episode of the Power Rangers on like, YouTube, the episode, and it's on like YouTube kids. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm like, oh yeah, this is dating, dating my my age for sure. But super incremental part of my childhood. And that's my story, Mr. Yak. All right. So tell me, Keontae, how has that impacted who you are today? The idea of I get it. I love the idea of first observing comics, then sort of analyzing them, and then having a friend actually take it a step further and say, hey, I could do this myself. And, and, and I, to me, it's you just told the story of creativity and how it happens, which is first see it, you know, then study it, then do it. But how do you think that's impacted who you are today? So right now, my current field is, is solar energy. And I guess the premise of that for me begins at a point of technology. I'm interested in technology as a whole. Yeah, and there was a point in, there was a point in life where I was at a crossroads between going into solar energy or robotics. I just love technology and the way that the programs were set up and for the education I was going to get for either one paid solar energy. It was like you get you paid. It was free program and you were paid to learn it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and so as my pathway took me onward and and, and further there is this quote that I came across that says some of the best technology is indistinguishable from magic. Love this quote because for me, 
that is in a sense how i live in in my own fantastical superhero world right in the normal world we don't have powers we're normal individuals we all for the most part have the same abilities can only lift around the average amount of weight no one's super special in those particular regards but i really view technology as a superhero as as a magical entity that can quote unquote help save the day and this isn't to be confused with me being some sort of savior or anything or wanting to be a superhero of the world this is me viewing i guess my interactions and, and and the uses of technology as a way to help the world as a way to benefit human beings so for my specific example solar energy is it is the wave it is the current it is helping aid our planet in the mitigation of the already existing climate issues and CO2 excess that we have in the world i even get specifically with solar people regularly you're like how does it work where where does the electricity come from you just face those in the sun like what's going on because there is a sense of i guess you can say like mysticalness to it it's like how does this Work. Where do you plug in? And so the, the the way that I was just fascinated as a child by by superheroes and, and saving the day, and even now to this day, I'm a big fan of of all the Marvel movies and all the Marvel phenomena and stuff going on. It's like you watch the fantastical world for entertainment, but then the real world, those ways of which applying those same ideas and that same passion for helping others, in my view, it comes through the form of using technology to help the world. Yeah, you know, I do think genuinely that you have a superhero quality in the sense of you're taking the talents that you have, mm -hmm. trying, you are trying, trying to create something or help create something or help promote something that we know at this point or we believe is healthier for our world than, you know, what we currently use for, for energy. And mm -hmm. people make commitments to this and it can be uh, for a, it can be for a lifetime and sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. And it's like, no, you're committed to trying to, you know, make the world uh, a cleaner environmental place. And mm -hmm. that is superhero type of, of actions. I, I think it's pretty cool. And I, I actually would agree with your friends who say, I have no idea how it works. I'm just so glad it does. So, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm glad that somebody has been able to translate the energy from the sun into a power grid, etc. So mm -hmm. do you see yourself doing this for a lifetime? Or is this just something you think you're going to do for a while? What are you thinking? So this, this will definitely I have a 10 year plan at the minimum. So <laughs> here for at least another 10 years, I started a co founded a solar energy installation company. So we've just been currently we are we have a large residential project that we're going to be tackling in uh, 2023. There's some new homes being built on the west in the west side neighborhood, North Lawndale, mm -hmm. Chicago. And yeah. so that's going to help expand a lot of things. Because right now, the first major project is powering a community refrigerator. And then more of those are in the works and in conversation. But this housing project is really going to expand and <laughs> really get things moving and create a sustainable company and be able to continue building further from that. So this is going to be a thing for quite some time. I even got, yeah, I envision ways of us expanding. We want to, like, like I said, the 10, 20 year plan, get into manufacturing of, of energy solutions, solar panels, battery storage. There's ways to, you can, you can use solar panels to power water, atmospheric water generators, um, and that's, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but for anyone, whether you or anyone that's not listening, or anyone that listens isn't familiar, an atmospheric water generator is essentially a, you can think about the mechanisms of a dehumidifier yes. and how it absorbs the moisture out of the air and condenses it into little droplets and all of those little droplets just collect in a pan or a pool. And now you have drinkable, clean, drinkable water. And so there's a way to do that with solar. So there's so many avenues and jump off points and expansions for this that I've got a literally in a notebook I've got a web of like this we start here and it connects to this and it goes here and it goes there and then we do that so this is going to be a project that I'll be working on for solar installation for quite some time <laughs> love it man I love it I'm so proud of you I really I, I'm, I'm happy that you're helping the world I love it I, I think you're like uh you are influenced greatly by the first Power Ranger comic man you're 
You're yeah. a Power Ranger in your own right. Uh, <laughs> so if anybody wanted to reach you, is there some place that they would be able to reach you or contact you regarding the stuff that you're doing, or is that uh, is it still under wraps? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm accessible. Anyone can reach me on my personal social medias, Keontae underscore H. So that's A-E-Y-A-N-T-E underscore just the letter H. Then there is our company social media, Sunbend Solar. So that's S-N-B-E-N-D-S-O-L-A-R, Sunbend Solar. And those social medias are all the same. So shoot us a message there. Um, it's, all of those are also connected to our emails, my personal and that one. Just connect to the email. So someone, if someone wants to find me, they can find me. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show, Keontae. It's great to see you. You look fantastic, and it's it's a joy. I'm actually on my way down to Whitney Young now. We're going back to the old haunt. Let's see how that goes. All right. Well, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to send you a uh, I know you say I haven't seen, seen the video, so I'm going to send you one of the videos that I made to just really show you how I'm still using video editing. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to see you again. I'm glad you're looking healthy and good and doing great things for the world. So I'd like to thank Keontae H. for his time. also like to thank our sponsors, Sidelining Publishing and LaughSaver.com. Remember to visit LaughSaver and download the app and we start recording your laughter. So I'm going to end this show as I often do with one of Susan Salador's classic songs. In this case, Every Moment, Every Day. Because I am thankful for the time I have with my students every moment, every day. So until next time, this is Jay Rehack asking you all to please stay safe out there and try not to hurt anybody. It is possible to be thankful every moment, every day. It, it takes practice and humility. It takes vision and civility. It takes practice and humility. It takes vision and civility. It takes possible to be wisdom to see it every day. It takes practice and humility. It takes vision and civility. It is possible to be thankful every moment, every day. It takes practice and humility, it takes vision and civility, it takes practice and the wisdom to see it as a ability, it takes practice and the wisdom to see it as a ability, it takes beauty and the wisdom to see it everywhere. It is possible to be thankful every moment, every day.